So good morning, everybody. Um, it is Thursday, June 18th, and today we have um, Ms. Darla Romberger with us, and um, she's going to be talking to us today about tips and best practices for FFA officer training. And I just want to remind you all that we are recording this, um, and it will be posted on our Facebook page, or sorry, our um, YouTube channel, as well as emailed out to participants. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to add those to the chat box or to the Q&A box at the bottom, and we'll be going through as we uh, answer those questions as we go. So I'm going to turn it over to Darla now. Yep. Hi there, Beth, and thanks for the invitation to present on this topic. Um, I was very flattered that someone said that this is something that they recognize that um, I do well. And this is really one of the areas of my program that I really enjoyed, um, and I, I tweak it every year. And when I was thinking about how best to approach this, rather than just saying, well, here's what I do, here's, you know what I mean, what we do and how to organize it. I just wanted to think, wanted to throw out the top 10 um, considerations that can kind of make this work for your chapter. So like I said, I do it differently every year based upon the group of students that we're working with. So I think that's kind of um, a good place to start and just throwing out 10 generalized tips and then um, obviously answering any questions. And I have a bunch of resources to share so do not be like frantically taking notes or like writing down um, any links that I provided in here. I have like, um, like a URL at the end that you will take you to a Google folder. You can get this presentation as well. So here's kind of the organization um, that I like to take. So sharing our top 10, taking about two to three minutes for each of those um, ideas. I'll show you um, literally just copy and pasted what a sample officer training agenda looks like for my chapter, both in the summer and then also with our mid-year retreat. With the world we're living in, um, we may or may not be able to meet our students in person to do um, initial year leadership training. So just some virtual considerations that I'm sure you've been thinking about and how we can adapt in these situations. Sharing what contents I specifically have in my officer binder. Again, you'll get links to those as we go forward. And then obviously some question and answer at the end. So I really look forward to that conversation and really just connecting with some of you that have also done this and just to share your best practices as well. So I'm always um, a quote lover. Again, I have them posted everywhere. I write them down, I highlight them in books. So really the mantra that um, I try to take is yes, we wanna make others better as a result of our presence, but making sure that when we are not there to lead our chapter or um, our officers directly, that we've given them the skills that they can do, um, they can meet our expectations, they can meet whatever goals we set in our absence. So I think that's really powerful for what our end goal should be with this. And this was um, a chart that I pulled out of one of the resources I'll talk about later. It really talks about leadership training isn't like kind of like a once and done type of situation, it's a process. So yes, we will have like formalized 30 to 45 minute um, leadership teaching sessions, but that is not the end all. They are gonna get that leadership training and experience through how you structure teaching them about running meetings, giving them the opportunity to plan and discuss accordingly um, within your chapter. So it isn't just a, let's teach them at the beginning and then they have everything that they need, they are gonna be learning um, through that experience as well. Okay, so here's with our, starting with our top 10. And like I said, I recognize that everyone has different needs, different expectations. So really the first thought is thinking with the end in mind. Checking out the chat there. Okay. You're we're just trying to get some sound for uh, Tana. Okay, but it's not me. Okay, just checking on that. Okay. So really, um, before you even start this process or start even putting together an agenda, think individually what, what you envision that your chapter needs, what you envision that your, the students that you're training need, and then really build things backwards. So obviously, I think the thing that comes to everyone's mind is, that specific leadership training and maybe an orientation to your expectations as an advisor, okay? I do not spend an entire retreat going over like leadership activity one, leadership activity two, like it is all, it's all 